Welcome to CFRI Cystic Fibrosis Community Voices, a video podcast series created by and for the cystic fibrosis community. Hi, my name is Kristen Shelton. I'm a respiratory therapist at Packard Children's Hospital, and I've been a therapist for the last 34 years there, and totally about 37 years. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about some refreshers for cleaning your equipment and some choices for airway clearance. So let's talk about cleaning your equipment. It's important to clean your equipment because your equipment can be a source of of bacteria and germs and it's important to keep it clean and dry before use, after every use. So the first step in cleaning your equipment is to wash your hands. There's some slides that are going to show you how to take your equipment apart into the different pieces so that it, every little nook and cranny gets clean. When you clean your nebulizer parts, you should use a very gentle dish soap and warm water. It doesn't have to be especially hot. It should be warm. And after you wash those parts, then you should rinse them in clear water. There are many different ways to uh, clean and disinfect your equipment. One of the easiest ways to do it is to boil it in water for five minutes. You want to make sure you have a good rolling boil and you want to make sure you set your timer because it's easy to forget that your equipment is on the stove. Another easy way to do it is to use the top rack of your dishwasher with the dishwashing uh, kit for baby equipment. And those are easy to find at Toys R Us. You can put all your different pieces in there and put it into the top of the dishwasher as long as you have a sterilization cycle on your dishwasher, everything should be good and the equipment will come out clean and dry. Another uh, recommended way to clean your equipment is by using a baby bottle sterilizer that you can purchase again at Toys R Us or any kind of store that sells baby supplies. I don't think I would necessarily run out and buy one of these. It's not any better than any other method, but for some people, maybe college students, this is a very good option. The microwave oven with a bowl of water and immersed equipment for five minutes at a boil is another good way to disinfect it and something that is also good for dorm room or traveling. Another good way to sterilize your equipment is using alcohol, either 70 or 90% alcohol, soaking for five minutes and then rinsing with sterile water. Another way to sterilize your equipment is by immersing in hydrogen peroxide. This takes about 30 minutes and then again, you're gonna need to rinse it with sterile water afterwards. After you wash your nebulizer parts, it is important to dry them before you use them again. You don't want to necessarily wipe them out with a paper towel, but you need to air dry them so that there's no water in any of the nooks or crannies before you use it again. That's a very important part of cleaning your equipment. I've given you a lot of options for washing your nebulizer. It's important to keep, keep it clean at all times and it helps to prevent the spread of germs. Now let's talk about some airway clearance options. When you're on the go, sometimes taking your vest is not an option. So let's discuss using the Aerobica, a handheld device that is easy to take apart and clean. Again, it could be cleaned in the top of the dishwasher or all those other methods that we talked about previously. It's very portable. It tends to stand up pretty well to uh, wear and tear and it is very effective. Another good option is the acapella, although there are difficulties with it because it's more difficult to clean. It has a lot more little places for germs to hide. And there's two devices that are acapellas that I would recommend. One is the acapella duet and the other one is the acapella choice because those can actually come apart and be used, uh, be cleaned easily. And the acapella duet can also be used with your nebulizer hooked up to it. So that's very handy. The Aerobica device allows you to hook your nebulizer to the end of it also, and that is a very easy way to do your airway clearance and your nebulizer at the same time. Uh, chest physiotherapy is something that we've been doing for many years, and it is a, a go-to and the gold standard, but often when you're traveling, PEP is something that you can use, and PEP stands for positive expiratory pressure. And you can do that using a device with a mask or, or a mouthpiece. And I put some pictures on the slides. You can take a look at it. This is something that we often forget is a, a option for airway clearance, but it's very effective. And it's used widely in Europe. And it uses pressure to hold the airways, stint the airways open so that the mucus can come out when the breath goes out. 
Another option for airway clearance is autogenic drainage. This technique is also very popular in Europe. It's difficult to learn. It's using your own breathing techniques to help to remove mucus by changing the dynamics of your airflow and the speed in order to remove secretions. It's very difficult to learn and it, is, it takes a long time to perfect, so it's not something that we use very often, but it is still readily available. One of the tried and true methods of doing airway clearance is to use the vest system. Uh, most people have some form of a vest. There are many different competitors right now and they're all shown to be pretty effective. You need to talk to your CF center about what they recommend. I hope one of these airway clearance ideas helps you if you're traveling or you're looking for something portable. And whatever you do, just do it. Thanks.